introduce yourselves, rank and everything. Hello, I'm IS3 Storm, Catherine Storm. I'm Machina Snape, Nuclear First Class, Cameron Storm. Oh, I'm Intelligence Specialist Third Class, Catherine Storm. <laughs> <laughs> so what, that's what the IS means? That's what the IS means. Well, they say it means I steal because I steal everyone's information, but um, it actually means intel intelligence specialist. Okay. And and Cameron, what do you? What's your real job in the Navy? I'm in charge of being in the submarine in the engine room and making sure all the water is good so we can go places. And Katie, what did you do, or what do you do now? Well, uh, I collect information um, and intelligence from around the world uh, to piece together the puzzle and try to be a fortune teller, basically. I'm trying to, to predict what everyone else is trying to do. Did you always do that, Katie? No, I did not. I've had a couple different jobs in the Navy. Um, my first job, I was a cook and I um, was stationed in Hawaii and then whenever I Got, I left Hawaii, I went into the logistics side of the Navy, and I worked there for a little while, which was really boring, I gotta tell you. And finally I was able to cross straight into my dream Navy job, and I'm doing it now. And Cameron, are, are, have you done this the whole time you've been in the Navy? I have. I spent about two and a half years in training down in South Carolina, and I went up to Connecticut for four years. Did my sub tour there, and now I'm back down here teaching the future me's. <laughs> future use. So you're a teacher too? I am. Do you get to grade your students? I do. We have a pretty intense rubric and grading scale. I'm pretty nice. I'm a hugger. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. What's the difference between being a male on a submarine and a female in a ship? Or, or is there a difference between being male and female in the military? I mean, this is as drastic as you can be between a submarine and a surface ship. Um, nowadays, they're integrating females and males together. Uh, they're starting <laughs> yeah. to do that on submarines, too. It's a challenge. Yeah, I don't know why a woman would want to go on a tiny little, little tin can. It's beyond me, but, you know, there are some females out there that want to do that, and power to them. <laughs> So when you're out to sea, Cameron, in the submarine, do you have to stay underwater all the time? Uh, it's in our best interest, too, because we're, we sometimes go places that we shouldn't. <gasps> so we want to uh, we want to sneak around. Yeah, be sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Oh, what are the secret squirrels, super secret squirrel stuff? Oh. Yeah, we can't talk about that too much. The goal of the submarine is to be undetected by anybody. And what are some of the cool places you've been? Ooh! I've been to Spain, uh, Bahrain, Iraq, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, specifically Scotland, uh, Norway. I know, I know. I went more um, in the, the Asian aspect of my deployments. I did more Singapore and Djibouti and Thai, uh, Taiwan, Thailand and um, Japan. I went to Japan twice. Um, so I think uh, I think my favorite one, we both went to my favorite one. The um, Oh my gosh, it just slipped my mind. The one with the, the indoor ski ball and stuff. Oh man. It's not by rain. It's not by rain. Dubai? Dubai! <laughs> Dubai, yes. Yeah, those guys have a lot of money. <laughs> and it's very it's very pretty over there. Um, that was a lot of fun. They've got they've got more money than I think they know what to do with. So they just have a lot of crazy stuff. Is it hard being married and, and you go one way and he goes the other? You know what? I actually thought I thought that being on the ship was gonna be the harder part, but I think being left home alone while he goes out to sea, I think that's the hardest. And I think he agrees whenever I have to go to my reserve duty and they send me away for my two weeks or my three months or wherever I go, being left at home is, is harder than going out. Because once 
once you get in a rhythm and you're at work, I mean, they keep you busy and you really don't have time to miss as much as you do whenever you're at home and you're like, oh, he used to sit in the chair right next to me. Plus, when you're underway uh, on a boat, a hundred other people are going through the same exact thing. So yeah, you can all support. be visible together. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what we do most of the time. <laughs> Uh, and and you have a newborn that's six weeks old today. Yes, so we do. Little have, Theodore. Have either of you gone out to sea since he's been born, or do you? How do you imagine it's going to be when you have to leave? Well, I, I'm gonna let Cameron tell about our plan for that. I will probably just ask off for work so I can take care of the baby when she inevitably goes back to work for a set of periods. But I don't, I'm not going back out to see him. Yay! And that's how we planned it. We planned it so that he was going to be in shore duty, which the, the Navy gives you a couple years on and off for shore duty so that you can kind of plan for things like this for your family, which is uh, it's nice so that you know, hey, we, we are going to be home for the next three years, so we're going to do what we can to maximize that time. So and pretty much as soon as we got here to South Carolina, that's when we started our family. So... We're going to have him at least for another year or two before we have to even think about that, I think. Oh, that's but, well, from his side. For me, the reserve, which we'll talk about the reserves a little bit more later, but it's a little trickier. You mentioned that you have some really cool awards in the background there. Oh, what these, are, are, these are Cameron's for sure. Oh, yeah. what are they? Oh, they're just uh, certificates from my first deployment to the Middle East where we went through each of the canals on our way down to uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so he's got, he has three of these. Uh, I didn't bring them all out, but I just put some back here so that we could show those off. And some of my favorite things, one of my favorite traditions about the military, uh, can you, oh, never mind, they're all gone. Anyway, but one of our favorite things is uh, coin trading. Whenever you do something really amazing, uh, while you're working with people, if they have a specific coin for their ship, which is this is the one for Cameron's last ship. Um, That's really cool looking. Amazing, right, isn't it? So if you do something amazing, then the commanding officer or whoever designed the coin, they will give it to you. And it's just, it's awesome. We have, we have quite a few. That was a big thing that I did while I was up in Connecticut was trying to, to gather up those as much as possible. So I wanted to show some it's of like those. It's like trying to get all the Pokemon in your trading card collection or something. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> so what, why did you decide to join the Navy instead of the Air Force or the Marine Corps or the Army? Well, I'm going to go first because I joined first. So um, I, was, I was in high school and, you know, we're all sitting around trying to figure out what we want to do with our lives. And as you can probably tell from Miss O'Kennedy's wall, there are quite a few military shout outs and so I mean I come from a line of military tradition and I think that's kind of the word that really closes up why I wanted to join was tradition not only the tradition for my family but the tradition for the Navy was very appealing to me they had the best training the best education and the best structure that um, I, I was looking for. Plus, they're they're not quite as mean and green as the Marines or the, the Army, which you can tell by the way we smile all the time. We're still pretty happy, so we'll stick with the Navy. <laughs> I didn't want to eat crayons as a Marine or just eat gum as an Army person or sit around in a chair in the Air Force. So. Hey, <laughs> people who might have Army Army parents out there, so. <laughs> The most important thing about the Navy for me was uh, they really pushed for education, and I feel like I got my money's worth. Well, not my money's worth. Your my time's experience, worth. yeah, my time's worth uh, being in the Navy, and uh, the the field that I'm in, the nuclear field, is one of the most respected programs throughout the uh, the nation. Absolutely. You tell somebody that you're a nuke in the Navy, and they're like, "Wow, that guy's that guy has some brains." <laughs> so, Katie. You said you were active duty and then you went to the reserves. When you got, uh, a lot of students look for the military because they have that great, you know, will help you out with college. Did you take advantage of that at all? Oh, absolutely. Um, whenever I 
whenever I went from active duty to reserves, the reserves gives you a, a little bit more free time. It's, it's kind of like you you are on the sidelines of the baseball game. You're, you're kind of sitting in the dugout, and while you're sitting in the dugout waiting to be put in the game, you can go to get a new job, you can start your family then, you can go and go to college and get the education that you earned while you were in the military, and that's what I did. Um, I left Hawaii and I transferred to Charleston, South Carolina, and I went to the Culinary Art Institute here in Charleston, and that's when I met him, actually. He was going to his training at the submarine base at that time. So yeah, I, I did my college and I got my associate's degree, and I started my life with him. <laughs> did the Navy help you out financially at all with that? Oh, absolutely, and I would say that, I mean, probably 80% of the people who join the Navy, their number one reason is the monetary support. The, I mean, you just not only helping to guide you on how to build up your credit and how to keep that money um, where it's supposed to be, but they, they support you so much in your education. They pay for all of it, all of it. I, didn't, I mean, no debt whatsoever. That's really great. Do you have any advice to give any of the students or would you like to say anything about Veterans Day in particular? Um, if it means anything like November 11th at 11 o'clock in the morning or anything like that? I think uh, all of you should really consider doing at least uh, one contract through any military branch. Uh, especially Navy. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll a you won't be debt free. You'll be debt free whenever you get out, and you can do your college and whatever you want to do. Uh, you'll get real life experience. You get to see the world. Um, they'll, Absolutely. They'll teach you how to adult. Like, mm -hmm. like you go to college right after high school. If some kind of career that you don't think you really want to do, and you commit, go into debt, and then you're just regretting it. So if you if you go to the military, it's you can't go wrong. Yeah, it's it's a great way to start out. Even if you give it, you know, four years or three years, even. I mean, it's it started. I mean, it was very very challenging, no doubt. But I it's don't working. I don't I do not regret it a, a single day. I am glad that I did it. I'm glad that I pushed myself through it. There's no way that Cameron and I would be here in this beautiful house that we're with our baby and our dog, there's no way that we would be where we are today if it wasn't for the military. Where, where's Thunder? Thunder is being a very good hound dog. <laughs> we tired him out this morning. He's up taking a nap with Teddy. Oh, okay. All right. Do you have any other questions? Uh, what does Veterans Day mean to them? What does Veterans Day mean to you? Right, 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 right. It, it's, a, it's a day for me to reflect back on all these questions that we've been talking about today, the tradition, and I, I mean, of course, I always, I always think back to my grandfather. I always think about where it started for me. I always think about how I used to look up to him, and I still do, um, and I think about him and what he did for our country and our family and everything, all the sacrifice that everybody has done for us. and. It's just, it's so mind-boggling that I get to play a tiny little part in it, even if I don't get to be out there shooting guns every single day, there is a little tiny part that I get to play for our country to work towards what my grandfather started. I, I agree. Yeah? yeah? You like Grandpa Cameron? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, if we could have named him William Francis Storm. <laughs> Definitely the tradition from our family, and yeah, I mean, his father was in the Marines for a little while, and just what was passed down to us, that those core values, the courage and the honor that goes into it, it's something that, you know, makes you stand a little bit taller, and uh, I put on my uniform this morning to do this interview, and I was looking at my ribbons and stuff, and it's just that, that pride, it just... It's something that makes you feel amazing every single time that you put this uniform on, and people see you and they say thank you for your service. It, it's, um, it's worth it. It's worth it. All right. Thank you. I look better the further away you get. <laughs> now, now. 
Okay. Um, can you tell us your names, please? Oh, I'm Chris Durham. I'm Jim Durham. Okay. Are you from Lawrenceburg? No. Not originally. Okay. How did you end up in Lawrenceburg? Uh, I had retired from the military and I came here uh, as a contractor working at Central Baptist Hospital. I came with her. Well, what branch of the military were you all in? Navy. Navy. Okay. And what made you want to get into the military, and specifically the Navy? Oh, I grew up uh, with a Navy family. My father was in the Navy through World War II. He got out after the China evacuation and uh, kind of was mad at the Navy at that time because he'd been away from home for so long. Well, when my oldest brother joined the Navy, my father went back into the Navy Reserves. So uh, he did a total of 30 years. And uh, my kid brother went into the Navy. He was a hard hat diver, which does salvage. They go underwater with those big tanks on their head. And then my other brother was a torpedo man. And then my uh, youngest brother, he went in the Coast Guard and then transferred over to the Army. You know, just one has to be the odd duck. And so I went in, and it was, um, I started out in the reserves, but I was a single mom, and uh, the Navy really offered me the opportunity to provide for my kids and give them health care and everything. So I went active duty, and I was uh, administration type. So it was kind of like a nine to five job. I enjoyed it, and it gave me a lot of benefits. My story is not the same. Oh, no. <laughs> I got uh, busted, all right, for a time, and uh, I was given by the judge a choice. Either go to the Indiana State Farm for a period of two to ten, or I could join the Armed Forces. So my dad was in the Navy in World War II. And uh, he told me a couple stories, and it was horrific, you know. But uh, I chose I chose the Navy, you know. And thank God I did, you know. Uh, a lot of my friends that were in in Indianapolis at the time are they're gone, or they're in prison, you know. So I ran around with a bad crowd. So the Navy really saved my life. That's that's awesome story. That is. Maybe we should have that option more often, <laughs> I think. What does Veterans Day mean to you all as veterans? To me it means that all the people that have been in the armed forces and have died for us, you know. I'm fortunate I didn't die, I was in Vietnam, I was in uh, Desert Storm, you know. and. Uh, I mean, that's two wars, you know, but I was never hurt, you know, which was lucky. I was on aircraft carriers. I was a, an aviation boatswain mate equipment, just catapults and arresting gear. I worked on the flight deck. So it's a very dangerous place, you know. If you've ever seen a video of the flight deck, it uh, looks like chaos, but it's actually, uh, everybody knows what they're doing. It's kind of like a ballet, you know. If you think about it, yeah. You know. But uh, I did. Uh, I was 18 years at sea, and then in my last five years, and it was short of different places: Lakehurst, New Jersey, and uh, Millington, Tennessee. I will tell you a short story. Like I said, my father was in World War II, and during the evacuation of Americans from China, my grandmother, his mom kept saying, you never tell me anything what you're doing in the military. You never say anything. So my dad wrote her a letter, and the letter was published in the newspaper. And it talked about the, his ship going down the river over there and seeing garbage and watching the Chinese swim out to get the garbage to eat. And that they would kill their babies because they couldn't afford them, couldn't feed them. And he saw a dog using a dead child as food. 
And when he got done, he says, that's it. You can either believe it or not, but that's the truth. And that's what I saw. And she had it, she took it to the newspaper and they published it and my dad was busted, striped. But it made me think of everything that we have in this country and that he did this. All of my brothers are named after somebody that was killed during World War II that was, had been a friend of my dad's. He had two ships sunk off from under him. Two were hit by kamikaze pilots. And I think that he did this. He was only 17 years old when he joined the Navy during World War II. And that takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery. And as long as I had known my dad, if he was saw a parade and the American flag came down, he would tear up. If you have a father that loves the country that much, I think it gets passed on. Well, thank you so much. That's, uh, I'm about to cry myself. <laughs>